and greeting saints of the Most High, Rod Thomas coming to you on this blessed Shabbat in the DFW. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedules to fellowship with me on this blessed day of rest. And as always, beloved, it is our hope, trust, and prayer that this installment of the Messianic Torah Observer finds you, your families, and fellowships well and blessed. This is Are God's People Required to Wear Tzitzit Today? And is the wearing of tzitzit a salvific issue? And just to cut to the chase, beloved, the answer to both questions, as far as I'm concerned, is a resounding yes. And I'll explain why in just a few. So why discuss tzitzit wearing here on TMTO? The reason I was led to discuss this topic is simple. I had not had any time in the past taken on this topic at any appreciable level. And given this topic's importance to the overall Messianic faith communities, I thought it is high time that I share with you both the biblical and my personal perspective on the wearing of tassels or tzitzit by Yah's set-apart people. And oh, by the way, the term tassels and tzitzits, well, they are synonymous for the purposes of our discussion here today. So let's do a little bit of background on tzitzits. If you have been around the Messianic Hebrew roots faith communities for any appreciable length of time, you've no doubt run into certain individuals wearing a set of four tassels, or aka tzitzits, or tzitziot, that extend from either their belt loops or from the hem of their blouses or tops. And these tassels generally consist of white threads with a single thread of blue that are knotted together into strands. Now, there are variations on this theme whereby some tzitzit makers have fashioned their tassels using multicolored strands as opposed to just a blue strand embedded in amid numerous white strands. Conversely, the tzitziot or tassels of some of our Orthodox Jewish cousins consist of just white strands that are sewn into the hems of their garments. These strands, when attached to Messianic believers' trousers or tops or blouses, tallits, prayer shawls, are easily seen by the outside world. However, members of certain Orthodox Jewish sects wear their tzitzits hidden beneath their outer wear. Also, generally speaking, more Messianic Notzerim Nazarene Israelite males than women wear tzitziot or tassels, and we'll get into why this is so later in this discussion. Like most things associated with Orthodox and Messianic Judaism, there are traditions and rules on how tzitzits are to be made or fashioned and when and how they are to be worn. Now, we won't get into these traditions and rules in this discussion simply because we're not subject to Jewish rabbis. Our rabbi is Yeshua HaMashiach, and we follow in his footsteps, and we adhere to his teachings and his example. And yes, as we will discuss in a few, our master Yeshua did, in fact, wear tzitzits. And furthermore, let's just put it out there now. There are Hebrew roots com groups or communities such as the Churches of God splinter groups that reject the wearing of tassels or tzitziot by their members, and we'll get into some of their arguments against tzitzit wearing later in this discussion. I've personally worn tzitzits full-time since 2014, and I will share why I wear them later in this discussion as well. Now, the commandment to make and attach tassels to our garments is found two places in Torah. Let's read them together. The first is Numbers, chapter 15, verses 37 through 41. 
And the scriptures, IVP rendering reads, And Jehovah spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak to the children of Yisrael, and you shall say to them to make tzitzit on the corners of their garments throughout their generations, and to put a blue cord in the tzitzit of the corners. Verse 39. And it shall be to you for a tzitzit, and you shall see it, and shall remember all the commands of Jehovah, and shall do them, and not search after your own heart and your own eyes, after which you went whoring. Verse 40, so that you remember, and shall do all my commands, and be set apart unto your Elohim. And lastly, verse 41, I am Jehovah, your Elohim, who brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim, Egypt, to be your Elohim. I am Jehovah, your Elohim. Again, that's Numbers chapter 15, verses 37 through 41. The second passage is found in Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 12. One verse, and the scriptures IVP rendering reads, Make tassels on the four corners of the garments with which you cover yourself. Again, Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 12. Just about every English translation of these two Torah passages rendered tzitzits as either fringes or tassels. So the use of the term tzitzits or tzitziot may sound foreign to the uninitiated. The word tzitzit consists of five Hebrew letters. Zadeh, Yod or Yad, Zadeh, Yod or Yah again, Yod again, and the last letter, Tav. Zadeh, Yod, Zadeh, Yod, Tav. It means tassel or lock of hair or blossoms. When our ancient cousins were commanded to make tzitziot and fasten them to the corners of their garments, they would have been familiar with what tzitziot were. For they were customarily worn by many pagan priests and kings as symbols of their privileged station and positions of authority in their respective nations. Yah's instructions for Yisrael's use of tzitziot serve the dual purposes of identifying or marking them as what? a royal priestly nation, and most importantly, they were to serve as a reminder, a reminder for them to keep his instructions in righteousness and to not go a-whoring after their own passions and false gods. So let's unpack the Torah commandments for tzitzit wearing. Yah commands Moshe to speak to Bene Yisrael, the sons of Israel, and tell them to fashion tzitziot with a blue cord to the corners or the hems of their garments throughout their generations. Numbers chapter 15, verse 37. Now, the purpose of the tzitziot is to serve as a reminder for the wearer of Yah's Torah and to walk exclusively in Yah's ways, verse 39. Furthermore, to remind the wearer not to follow, not to pursue their own way, their own heart, their own perspectives on things. And thus, in walking in Yah's Torah, Yisrael becomes set apart exclusively unto Yehovah. Verse 40. Bene Yisrael, then, is commanded one, make unto themselves tassels that include a single cord of blue. Two, attach the tassels to the four corners of their garments. And three, to look at, to look at, to look at the tassels and be reminded to guard 
and walk in Yah's Torah and not follow their own ways. This commandment seems to have been given by Yah on the heels of Yisrael's refusal to go in and take possession of the land of promise as Yah commanded them to do. Yisrael, after receiving the negative report from ten of those that went to spy out the land, determined to replace Moshe as their leader and to return to Egypt. Numbers chapter 14, verses 1 through 4. Yehoshua and Caleb, Joshua and Caleb, after renting their clothes in response to this rebellion, attempted to reason with the nation with the following words. This is found in Numbers chapter 14, verses 8 and 9. And the scripture's rendering reads as follows. If Jehovah has delighted in us, then he shall bring us into this land and give it to us a land which is flowing with milk and honey. Verse 9, Only do not rebel against Jehovah, nor fear the people of the land, for they are our bread. Their defense has turned away from them, and Jehovah is with us. Do not fear them. Again, that's Numbers chapter 14, verses 8 and 9. So Yisrael rejects the pleas of Joshua and Caleb, even posturing to take them out by stoning them. Chapter 14, verse 10. The glory of Yah appears in the tabernacle, in the sight of the nation. The rebelliousness of the people kindles the wrath of Jehovah. And Yah purposes to wipe out the whole nation, save Moshe, Caleb, and Joshua. But Moshe appealed to the mercies of Yah, who in turn halted the nation's destruction from the wrath of Jehovah. However, the adult generation that came out of Egypt would be condemned to wander for 40 years and then die in the wilderness. Thus, the commandment that Bene Yisrael, the children of Israel, where Tetziot was binding and served as a reminder of what they failed to do. And what did they fail to do? They failed to obey Yah's commandments. Consequently, every adult that departed Egypt in the Exodus, because of their rebelliousness and refusal to obey Yah's command to take the land of promise, died in the wilderness. Again, save Caleb and Joshua. Numbers chapter 26, verse 65. And throughout the whole of those 40 years leading up to each Israelite's death, they would see tzitzits attached to the four corners of their tallit and remember why they were in the situation they were in. So looking closer to the actual fringes or tassels and how they were to be worn, Yah commanded, and this is in Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 12, you shall make tassels for yourselves where? on the four corners of your clothing with which you cover yourself. The Tetziot Mitzvah, or commandment, is concisely repeated here in Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 12. This iteration of the instruction stipulates that the tassels are to be fashioned onto the four corners of the garments that Bene Yisrael, the children of Israel, uses to cover themselves. Yah further elaborated that the tzitzit were to have intertwined in them a cord or ribbon of blue. So what's up with the blue cord or ribbon? Portions of the tabernacle curtains and the priestly garments were made of blue colored fabrics. And this is referenced in Exodus chapter 26, verse 31, and Exodus chapter 28, verse 31. Thus, Blue accents were linked 
to the priestly identity and function of Yisrael. That identity was not confined only to the Levites, but it was attached to all the descendants of Yisrael. Exodus chapter 19, verse 6. Therefore, it would not be a stretch for us to associate the ribbon of blue that is commanded to adorn the Tetziot to be a symbol, to be a reminder of the Israelites' priestly function and purpose in the world. Thus, the commandment that Yah attached to Tetzit wearing by his people, that they remember and walk in Yah's Torah, as would be expected of any priest. Numbers chapter 15, verse 40. The Israelite was prohibited from following their own whims, their own ways. They belonged to Jehovah. They had been purchased with a price from the gods of and Pharaoh of Egypt. Looking back to the Levites and their priestly function, they were to have no inheritance when the nation would come and take possession of the land. Yah told Aaron, Thou shalt have no inheritance in their land, neither shalt thou have any part among them. I am thy part and thine inheritance among the children of Israel. Numbers 18 verse 20 and reference Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 2. So the priest would not only intercede on behalf of the people to Jehovah, but they would also serve as a model of the ideal Israelite, whose whole purpose and function was to loyally serve Jehovah. And conceivably, this ribbon of blue, indicative, and reflective of Yah's set-apart nature, intertwined in Bnei Yisrael's titziot, would remind each soul of their covenantal role as a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Exodus chapter 19, verse 6. Now, I did not factor this into my discussion really well, but one cannot escape the reality, beloved, that tzitzits, the very nature of tzitzits, the very purpose of tzitzits, is a physical, visual reminder, foreshadowing of the person and ministries of Yeshua Messiah. Originally, Yah gave them to be reminders to the wearer to keep and walk in his ways and not go a whoring after other gods and after their own whims and ways. But when we look at this thing, Yeshua, the walking, talking Torah, <laughs> of a, operating out of the Mishkain as the Kohen HaGadol, the Kohen Hawakadal, the high priest who intercedes on our half before the Father all day, every day. And he is royal. He is our king. This is something that, if anything, should spur us to wear teeth seeds. It's that symbol, that symbolism of Yeshua. It's just another way to show Yeshua to the world. Now, the wearing of Tetziot would extend throughout every generation. Every Hebrew four-cornered Hebrew garment possessed Tetziot or Tetzitz or tassels, extending from the time this mitzvah was passed down in Torah, even up to the time of Yehoshua and beyond. Post-Temple and into the Talmudic period of the Diaspora, the Jews, upon adopting the attire of whatever people they ended up living amongst, modified their tzitzit wearing, 
instead of the teat seats being fashioned to every four-cornered garment they possessed back in the land, they had them attached to their primary sets of garments. One, their prayer tallit, otherwise referred to as prayer shawls today, and two, their undergarment tallit, which they wore each day. And of course, under the rabbinic umbrella, there are rules on how and when to wear them. Now, the rabbis, never to lose, never at a loss to control even the smallest Torah-related practice, codified and forced the way tzitzits were to be fashioned. And this rabbinic instruction delineated, quote, the exact manner in which each tassel was to be made and gave a symbolic meaning to the numbers of windings and knots. The main aim seems to have been the association of the fringes with the law in the mind of the wearer, end quote. And this is from a commentary in the International Standard Bible Encyclopedia, 1979-1988. Let's talk about Tzitzitz and Yeshua healing in his wings. Of course, the wearing of Tzitzit continued well into the first century Judea. They were prominently worn by the religious leaders of the Sanhedrin who, instead of keeping the spirit of the commandment, wore them to draw attention to themselves. <laughs> Can you see that? This self-centered practice drove Master Yeshua crazy, and he criticized the Jewish religious, religious leaders for their misuse of tzitzit. Found in Matthew chapter 23, verse 5, and the Master says, And they, speaking of the scribes and Pharisees, do all their deeds to be seen by people, for they make their phylacteries broad and their tassels long. <laughs> and not to be lost on the self-centeredness of the scribes and Pharisees, Tzitzit were worn by every first century Jew, including our master Yahushua. And it is our master's wearing of Tzitzit that should be of particular interest to the kingdom-minded, kingdom-bound messianic. The story of the woman with the issue of blood factors prominently into the efficacy and spirituality that is associated with tzitzit wearing by Yah's set-apart people. Most prominent when we consider the fact that the woman with the so-called issue of blood sought healing from her debilitated illness by simply grabbing onto the master's tzitzit clearly reveals Two relevant truths. One, Yehoshua kept Yah's commandments as evident in his wearing tzitzit. And two, the woman fervently believed there was healing in even the master's garments, including his tzitzit. The passage reads as follows. And this is Matthew chapter 9, verses 20 through 22. And the scripture's IVP rendering reads, And see a woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years came from behind and touched the tzitzit of his garment, his being Yeshua's garment, his tzitzit, verse 21. For she said to herself, If I only touch his garment, I shall be healed. In verse 22, but Yeshua turned, and when he saw her, he said, Take courage, daughter. Your belief has healed you. And the woman was healed from that hour. Again, that was Matthew chapter 9, verses 20 through 22. Now, the Greek word for fringes or tassels in our mitzvah, in our commandment of Numbers 15, verse 38, and in the story of the healing of the woman with the issue of blood in Matthew chapter 9, verses 20 through 22, is Craspedon. Craspedon. The woman with the issue of blood is recorded to have haptomai craspedon autos hemation, or fastened herself to the tzitzit of his tallit. 
It is a reasonable probability that the affected woman was familiar with the prophecy that stated, and this is in Malachi chapter 4, verses 1 and 2, which reads, For look, the day shall come burning like a furnace, and all the proud and every wrongdoer shall be stubble. And the day that shall come shall burn them up, said Jehovah Sabaoth, Jehovah of hosts, which leaves to them neither root nor branch. Verse 2, but to you who fear my name, the son of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings, and you shall go out and leap for joy like calves from the stall. Again, that's Malachi chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. There is a clear connection between the colorful description of wings and the kanaf or borders of one's garments where tzitzits, tassels, would be attached. Clearly, the woman with the issue of blood took this prophecy to heart and she grabbed hold of the master's tzitzit and in so doing, she was healed. Sadly, most Bible teachers aren't willing to make this connection. And there is one other reference to Yeshua's tzitzit healing the sick that is found in Matthew chapter 14, verses 34 through 36, which reads as follows. And having passed over, they came to the land of Gennesar. Verse 35. And when the men of that place recognized him, him being Yeshua, they sent out into all that surrounding country and brought to him all who were sick. And lastly, verse 36, and begged him, begged Yeshua to let them only touch the teeth seat of his garment. And as many as touched it were completely healed. Most English translations of this passage of Holy Writ render what we consider to be Yeshua's tzitzits as the fringe of his garment or the border or hem of his garment. The Holman Christian Study Bible, surprisingly, renders this portion of the master's garment as tassels. The Koine Greek term that is in question here is kraspodon, which means edge, border, or tassel. Clearly, tassel is the most accurate rendering. Let's talk about the 21st century West and the wearing of tassels by God's set-apart people. For the Nazarene Israelite of the 21st century West, Tzitzits or tassels and the wearing of tzitziot serve as outward symbols to the world of our identification as disciples of Yehoshua Messiah and as our commitment to walk in his ways. He is for all intents and purposes the walking, talking Torah. He is our example for righteous living and our direct link to Yehovah, the creator of the universe. His righteousness has brought peace between us and Jehovah. And his righteous obedience has brought us salvation and has provided the means for us to receive and enter the coming kingdom of Elohim, the coming kingdom of Yah, the Malchut Elohim. And his person, his ministry, has led to Yah's set-apart spirit dwelling upon and within we who are children of the God of Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. The whole concept of Yah's people wearing tzitzits in the 21st century West has become somewhat of a divisive issue in Messianic circles. And I'm confident that most Torah-honoring souls, especially in the West, do not wear tzitzit, at least not on a full-time basis for various and sundry reasons. But the minority that do wear them full-time do so for a couple simple reasons. One, Yah instructed that they be warned by B'nai Yisrael, the children of Israel, throughout their generations. And two, wearing them 
is a symbol of being set apart unto Jehovah for his exclusive purposes. Personal consecration. Leviticus chapter 20, verses 7 and 8. Romans chapter 6, verse 13. These dismiss all the excuses and reasons given by the majority for not wearing them as an example of rebelliousness. That is, picking and choosing which commandments the rejectors feel like keeping versus which they don't feel like keeping. The point behind Yah's instructions for his sons to wear tzitzit, tassels, is simple. B'nai Yisrael, the children of Israel, was to look upon them as a reminder to them to walk in Yah's instructions in righteousness and to not follow the unfaithfulness of the wearer's own heart and eyes. Numbers chapter 15, verse 39, Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 9, and verse 23, and Isaiah chapter 55, verses 6 through 8. Again, the ultimate goal is wearer and congregation set-apartness or consecration. You see, humans forget that which they are supposed to do. Human forgetfulness in this context, however, is not so much about people failing to remember critical central truths such as the covenant and Yah's instructions for righteous living. The forgetfulness that Yah is referring to here as it relates to the wearing or the or not wearing tzitzit has to do with abandoning Yah's ways for the ways of the world because the supposed child of Yah simply wants to do carnal things. The tzitzit that every Bene Yisrael is commanded to wear provides them with a final escape from wickedness and carnality when they are tempted. Today, this final escape mechanism of the tzitzit, or the tassels, is in addition to the indwelling presence and work of the Ruach Chodesh, the Holy Spirit. Everyday life, pride, stubbornness, and modern-day anti-Hebrew, anti-Torah mindsets are some of the reasons why the majority of members in our faith reject the wearing of tzitzit by modern-day messianics. I've been personally criticized for my wearing of tassels or tzitzit by Sabbath-keeping, feast-keeping, clean-eating believers. And the two reasons I was mocked and rejected by these individuals was, one, the commandment to wear tzitzit no longer applies to us because we are in the 21st century West, do not wear four-cornered garments, which they claim nullifies both the numbers and Deuteronomy instructions to wear them. And the second is that the wearing of tzitzit by Yah back in the day was for purposes of reminding Bene Yisrael to keep the commandments. Well, in the minds of the Tzitzit rejectors, Messianics today have that indwelling Holy Spirit to keep them on the straight and narrow, which means that the advent of the Holy Spirit in the lives of Messianics today has nullified this commandment. <laughs> now, let's look at the first challenge. Indeed, most of us do not wear four-corner garments, but does this really nullify this commandment, the fact that we don't wear four-cornered garments in the West? Consider the fact that neither the temple nor, nor the tabernacle exists today. So does this reality nullify the commandment to observe the pilgrimage feast of unleavened bread, Shavuot or Pentecost and Sukkot or tabernacles? Both tassels or tzitzit wearing and feast keeping commandments were promulgated by Yah to be kept throughout all Israel's generations. So what's the difference? Well, let me tell you the one difference. You see, one can easily hide their feast keeping from others, but they can't hide their wearing of tzitzit or tassels. Properly worn tzitzit 
tassels can be easily seen by the world, and that wearing of those consecrated implements serve as a testimony to the world of the wearer's covenant relationship with the God of Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, as well as it keeps the wearer accountable of their responsibility to walk in Yah's ways exclusively and at all times. If the wearing of tzitziot has been nullified by the reality that 21st century Western attire does not have four corners, then we shouldn't give tithes and offerings. For when the commandment to tithe and give offerings was passed down to us, we were an agrarian people. Israel was an agrarian nation. And based on the commandment given by Yah regarding the tithes and offerings, many of us cannot keep the commandments to tithe and give offerings as it's recorded in Torah today. Why? Because most of us are not farmers. And there is no Levitical priesthood nor tabernacle or temple in which to deposit our tithes and offerings. Right? Yet a great many of us still believe we should tithe. We should give offerings. So again, why do we reject heat seat wearing over the technicality that we no longer wear four-cornered garments? It's a weak argument. So any argument against the commanded wearing of tzitziot by Yah set apart people is a dangerous one to wage. Any one of us can easily find those who are not members of our faith communities who will just as easily poke holes in our rationale for keeping all the Torah instructions that we generally keep. The other argument often raised by some against the wearing of tzitziot by today's messianics is that the indwelling of the Holy Spirit makes the wearing of tzitziot invalid. Really? <laughs> Why? Because the Holy Spirit works with the believer to help them obey Yah's instructions and to resist sinning. That's what they claim. Well, <laughs> like the previously debunked argument, this argument is also a dangerous excuse for not wearing tzitziot. To say that the Holy Spirit's existence in the life of the believer invalidates Yah's commandments including the wearing of tzitzit, tassels, tzitziot, then you are condemning the collective and individual walks of the first century saints who kept Yah's instructions in righteousness even unto death. To say that the indwelling presence of Yah's Holy Spirit makes one impervious to sin, while at the same time urging people to violate Yah's Torah commandments to not wear tzitzit is a self-condemning act. One of the purposes and functions of Yah's set-apart spirit is to provide the netzer the power to say no to sin and to earnestly desire to keep Yah's commandments. Thus, for one to condemn and to encourage people to violate this and other Torah commandments because of the Holy Spirit dwelling in them is contradictory at best. For Yah's set-apart spirit would never, ever lead one to disobey Yah's commandments. Yah's Holy Spirit cannot, nor will it ever, nullify Yah's Torah. Which brings to mind the question of seat wearing by Yah's set-apart people being of a salvific issue. By salvific issue, I mean, does one have to wear seats in order to be saved? Let's cut to the chase. I believe tzitziot, tassel, seat wearing can very much be a salvific issue. As shocking as this may sound, why do I make this shocking statement? It is a salvific issue when one, knowing of the existence of a commandment of Yah that they should keep, and that they are more than capable of keeping and walking out, and that they choose not to keep and walk out that commandment because they don't want to, 
Well, then they stand a good chance of losing their salvation. Why? Because they are in effect rebellious against the Almighty. And y'all has only so much patience for rebelliousness. The prophet cried, Woe to you, O rebellious and defiled one. Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 1. Those who know better are expected to do better, and those who know Torah will be held responsible and judged within the framework of Torah. I will put in the transcript of this program, of this teaching, the link to the teaching I did, oh, it's been what now, a few years, on what I mean by being judged within the framework of Torah. Um, I would encourage you, if you've not gone through, it was, a, it was a very short series that I think, I think it was two or three parts, that I would encourage you, if you've not already read or listened to, to click on that link and get into that teaching. It's very important at least for today's messianics who will come across people who are big Paul fans. There's nothing wrong with Paul. Paul is essential, to, is essential scripture reading for every messianic. But what I'm saying is, is that they are misunderstanding Paul. Paul's writings are hard to understand, which his brother, his brother in the faith, Peter said of him, there, he's hard to understand, and people take his words and they twist it to their own destruction. And this is what people are misunderstanding. But they will be judged if you know what to do because Torah tells you to do it and you don't do it, you're condemning yourself. Why? Because you're being rebellious. You don't want to do it, so I'm not going to do it, so I'm going to, I'm going to make up a reason why I'm not doing it. And that's what most people who reject seat wearing by your set-apart people do. They make up a reason. We don't wear four-corner garments, or I have the Holy Spirit dwelling in me, so I don't have to do it. Well, I am not the judge of anyone. I can't be. Yeshua will have that job on that day when so many will say to Yeshua, Master, Master, didn't I? And so forth and so forth. Matthew chapter 7, verses 22 and 23. I'm just, don't hate the, the deliverer of the word. Just deal with it. Take it. Yeah, we keep the Torah commandments that we can keep today to the best of our understanding and ability. And certainly we can wear tzitzits. It's quite doable. It just comes down to one's earnest desire to walk blamelessly in Yah's set apart ways and instructions, which brings us to the last argument that is often waged against tzitzit wearing by modern day messianics. Are women or females required to wear tzitzit? Well, it appears that when the commandment for B'nai Yisrael, the sons of Israel, the children of Israel, to wear tzitzit was given, it applied to just the males of the nation. It seems that way. Let me remind you, however, that under the auspices of the renewed covenant, which we are under today, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male nor female, for we are all one in Messiah Yeshua. Galatians chapter 3, verse 28. So I'm going to let this passage answer the question of this commandment as it relates to women wearing teat seats today. Beloved, I pray that you got something out of this teaching on teat seats and its relevance, their, their relevance to Messianics, Note Serene, Nazarene Israelites today. And if you are struggling with the question of whether you should wear teat seats or if you are dealing with challenges surrounding your wearing of them, take it to Yehovah. Take it to Yehovah. Talk to Yah about your situation. 
express to him your concerns about wearing them. As in all things related to walking out this beloved faith of ours, your keeping of Yah's instructions and in righteousness is between you and him, Yah. I don't have a heaven or hell to place anyone into because we are all on this amazing journey to the kingdom. Consequently, we are all at different places in our journey to the kingdom. So I don't pass judgment or reject any who choose not to wear teat seats. Hey, I come across very few people who wear them anyway, so I'm used to it. But when I do run into someone who is wearing them, I tell you it's a beautiful thing to commune with that individual and share the blessings of our faith with one another. Then there are those who are drawn to our wearing of tzitzis either out of curiosity or simply to strike up a conversation around them. And those times are also precious as I get to provide, as we get to witness of our beloved faith to souls that desperately need the truth and redemption. And my prayer is that they see the light of Messiah beyond the simple threads of my tzitzis and they come to enjoy a covenant relationship with the creator of the universe. Beloved, there is a great spiritual power and meaning to be had by the wearer of Yah's consecrated tzitzits, the one who keeps the commandments of Yehovah and all the while holding tight to the testimony of Yeshua Messiah, Revelation 12, 17. For there is coming a day when Teshuva and revival in Jerusalem, Jerusalem, greater even than the great day of Shavuot in 28 AD in Jerusalem. The prophets foretell of a day when Jerusalem and her inhabitants will be the epicenter of a great revival, which will draw the Gentile nations to come and earnestly seek Jehovah and his Messiah. Isaiah chapter two, verse two, Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 17, and Jeremiah 16, verse 19. Of that time, the prophet Zechariah chapter 8 wrote, verse 20, Thus says Jehovah Sabaoth, People shall yet come, inhabitants of other cities, many cities, verse 22, and the inhabitants of the one go to another, saying, let us earnestly go and pray before Jehovah and seek Jehovah Sabaoth. I myself am going, verse 22. And many peoples and strong nations shall come to seek Jehovah Sabaoth, where? In Jerusalem, and to pray before Jehovah, verse 23. Thus said Jehovah Sabaoth, in those days, 10 men, from all languages of the nations take hold. Yes, they shall take hold of the corner of the garment of a man, that is, kanaf, the wing of his garment. A Yehudi, a Jew, a Messianic Jew, saying, Let us go with you, for we have heard that Elohim is with you. <laughs> Zechariah chapter 8, again, verses 20 through 23. Therefore, beloved, if you are led to wear tzitzit, tassels, tzitzits, not simply because you are commanded of Yah to do so, which you should if you are commanded to do, but because you, more so because you love Yehovah with all your being and you desperately want to imitate our master, Yehoshua HaMashiach, then do so in peace, joy, love, hope, and great anticipation of the coming Malchut Elohim, the kingdom of God. Until next time, beloved, I bid you Shabbat Shalom, Shavua Tov, take care. <music>